Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There you go, right down there. If you wanna be among the first to hear my weekly takes, NFL, college football, more, right there. Um, I wanna talk about, I, I'm not a big believer. I think choices is another word for fate. I'm pretty agnostic, um, though most of my friends are very religious. Um, uh, I, I, I veer more toward the spirituality, I think. Um, I don't believe in uh, too many coincidences. Right now, New York, as the as the Yankee sort of spiral, um, New York has had a bad, mostly decade in sports. And I was thinking about this the other day. I thought Jalen Brunson taking less, $115 million less for the Knicks, was one of the savviest moves. And I know he'll get pushback because the, the term get the bag now is just synonymous with like NBA stars. Is Brunson the most loved athlete in the last 15 years in New York since Ewing or since Jeter? I think Eli's in there. I think Eli winning the two Super Bowls, but he's close. I mean, and Brunson, if he just gets one, it's going to explode. But what's amazing is, and he'll he'll make up that money maybe in the next contract. And I think he's eligible in 2028 when he can get over 300 million. And yes. so, but he's smart. Yes. Look how smart this guy is. He looks around and says, well, nobody in New York's won a championship in forever. And the Knicks haven't won since 1973. So somebody's going to be the guy who does it. And the guy who does it, if it's me, that's going to be worth a lot more than $113 million in my lifetime for, he's going to be lionized forever and he was smart enough to figure it out and so if you look at new york sports right now and we've talked about this i think on other shows where new york sort of lost its advantage over other markets because you can be a global yes. superstar in oklahoma city wherever the world is so small now so new york's lost that edge and but the one edge new york has is if you look at the Mets haven't won since 86, the Jets haven't won since January 69, the Knicks haven't won since 1973, the Mets haven't won since 86, the Yankees, to them, since 2009, that's a drought. So if you come to New York and end the drought, you are lionized forever, and it's it's the, the payoff there is worth far more than $113 million, particularly when Brunson will get that back in the next contract. He was smart enough to figure out now's the time I have to help the Knicks form a championship yes. roster because I'm going to lead that roster. And if we win it all, that is going to be something that you can't buy. And, and doing that in New York after more than 50 years for the Knicks, what is that going to mean to him? Mark Messier won five cups in Edmonton. He ended a 54-year drought in New York. And that's the only cup anyone ever talks about is – him winning number six is the one who won and the drought for the Rangers. And he'll tell you that, that they talk more about that than the other five combined. And, and he can't buy a meal in New York, of course, for the rest of his life. So, yeah, Brunson is smart enough. He's figured it out. I'm making killer money, multi-generational money anyway. So let me try to do what I can to be the guy who ends the drought. So then my legacy goes to a stratosphere I can't even imagine. So, I, I think he's made the right play here. Um, for the audience listening that doesn't know the hierarchy of the Knicks, they may know James Dolan, who I think was sidetracked uh, with the sphere for two years, which allowed the front office to control basketball. As Dolan stepped away, he has a musical background, and it was actually an advantage. Now the sphere, the, the sphere's done. The sphere's done. He's back to talking about how much he loves Julius Randle, which is problematic. <laughs> I don't think he fits with what they – once Hartenstein left, they lost size, a true center, Randle small. I don't think he fits this small lineup, which often goes four guards. It'll be now three guards, Mikhail Bridges. So I don't think Randle fits. I think he's productive. I don't think he's a good fit. And here comes James Dolan, done with his Vegas project, to talk basketball and how much he loves Julius Randle. Over the last two years, the Knicks have arguably gone from the most dysfunctional organization, ownership group, to a highly functional, maybe not Miami or Golden State, but a highly functional operation. 
who do we give credit to in the suite upstairs? Leon Rose. It's very simple. And listen, he hasn't talked to the media in, I don't know, more than two years. It's in New York City. I don't know how Adam Silver, a New Yorker, lets him get away with that. I've, I wrote a column that was very critical of him a couple of years ago. The Knicks went crazy over this column. And because he hasn't talked to the beat writers and, and the media at large in New York City, it, it has to be more than two years now. Not, not one word. So now Knicks fans don't care because the guy knows what he's doing. And I'll admit that. I'm not afraid to say he's done a great job. Early on, he struggled. He made some moves that Tibbs didn't like. He got a couple guys in that, like Cam Reddish, that Tibbs – didn't want and Fournier and Kemba Walker guys that Tibbs didn't want. And, but man, it's one home run now after another. And I have to give the man yep. credit for doing it. And, and so I will. And now his roster is one that could they go to the NBA finals next year after getting bridges? Yeah, I think they can because what, yeah, you, it's so hard to repeat now in the NBA and look, look at Denver this year. They couldn't get through even to the finals. And after they won last year, we thought they might win three of the next four. And they, I guess they still might. Boston is going to be tough to do it again. They're coming back with the same team. They're, are they better than the Knicks, their roster? Yes. But it's just so hard to get back that I think there's an opportunity there for the Knicks to get through and challenge somebody in the West. I think Bridges was the right move. You're you're right about Randall, but you know what? He's a 24-10 and 10 guy. And I think he has value around the league if they do want to move. He him, does. What they could use is a is a center who could shoot from the outside just to open up lanes for Brunson and Hart and DiVincenzo and Bridges and and just to space the defense out some. They don't they didn't have last year with Hartenstein and and Mitchell Robinson, a, a center who could do that. So if they can move Randall in a pack, now they, they had to send so many assets out to get bridges. But if it, for a, I don't know, does, does Minnesota decide that Carl Anthony Towns and Edwards and Gobert that doesn't quite fit? We need to add a different piece to win it all. Maybe I know that Cat, I know that Tibbs is willing to coach Cat again, even though they, they had problems in Minnesota. I know that for a fact. And I also know as a New Jersey kid, he does have uh, Towns does have some interest in playing uh, for the Knicks at some point. So but it would be something yeah. like that. Maybe I could see happening. But I do think Randall has value around the league. Yeah. And, and when he was in Los Angeles, you know, he's one of those players where the league, the culture and the style of the league changed and Dwight Howard fell off a cliff. Randall didn't. But he's not he's not aligned with current basketball he's not going to shoot from the perimeter um he's kind of an old school bully ball physical player relentlessly hard player intense it doesn't look it's not aesthetically pretty it's not the current game um but it, he's productive and i there is you know sometimes he has struggled in the playoffs but there is value in in dropping 24 and 8 a night in the regular season which is such a treadmill which is i mean it's a long hike and a dark windy road and i think he i think he provides for a lot of teams stability and production but um i gotta tell you as, as somebody who started watching the nba in the early 70s i find the knicks have the and this is hard for a big market team i find them incredibly likable the villanova thing is God, they're likable. I, I I can't think of the last. I mean, I didn't necessarily love the Giants. The Yankees were fun, but again, outspending everybody. This this Knicks team feels like one of the more huggable in in New York no history. Question, Colin, and you look at Brunson is is the biggest reason why because he's a guy again as as when he arrived, I wasn't sure, and many people weren't sure if he was good enough to be the second best player on a championship team. I think he's proven he could be the best player. On a championship team, oh yeah, the right yeah. pieces around him. But now taking less money, sort of a la Tom Brady, in, in trying to help the roster and trying to win the championship, yeah. and just saying all the right things. I mean, he would fit in with the Red Holtzman Knicks in 1970 and 73, and and, and he fits in today perfectly. And he was a, a coach's son, a point guard son, and and you could just see he's got so much savvy. On the floor, his footwork is unbelievable. I think he's got the best footwork for a guard I've ever seen, particularly in the paint. And he's not athletic. You look at his body, he doesn't look like an NBA player. He certainly doesn't look like an NBA superstar, and yet he is. And 
It's like every night. I remember uh, his first year in New York, Tim Bontemps of ESPN used to make fun of me because I was working at the New York Post as a columnist. And every time I went to a Knicks game, I wrote a column about Jalen Brunson. And he said, are you ever going <laughs> to write about somebody else? And I said, no, Tim, because I've been around a lot longer than you. And I see what's happening here in year one. You could see it. It was a perfect marriage yeah. between market and athlete. And it was only going to get better. And that's exactly what's happened. Yeah.